If I were to ask you to tell me who you are, the chances are that you wouldn't say that you are the stories that you tell. And yet, across many different disciplines in the social sciences and beyond, there is now quite a great deal of agreement that stories are central to people's identities. But what does that mean? Why is that the case? Well, when people tell stories, they're selecting events that are important to them, they're talking about their experiences, we get some sense of how they feel about those events and those experiences, and a very good sense of how they populate their stories, who's in the stories, who's made relevant, who isn't, which people are important to them and which are not. So they tell us a great deal. They're very useful for social researchers. They're useful for politicians and so on. But you might still ask, what's this got to do with identities? In order to answer that question, we really need to think about the nature of identities. And they're fascinating. In the middle of the last century, Eric Erikson, who was a Danish-American psychoanalyst, said that identities are really the important issue for the 20th century. And he thought that because many people had lived through very serious wars, like the world wars, and he pointed out that where there was a threat to existence, the identities came to the fore, but identities were always important. And one of the things that he theorized about identities that many people still believe is that we achieve our identities in adolescence, when we're young, and that they stay roughly the same after that. With some changes, Ericsson was very, very uh, productive theorist, so he recognized that right up till, the, till we died, that we were still generative, but nonetheless, identities were achieved in adolescence. Now, one of the exciting things about rethinking identities is that we now recognize, again across many different disciplines, but particularly in the social sciences, that in fact, identities change all the time. And it's not just that they change from birth through to death, but also that they're different in different contexts. The identities that come to the fore in one context, say in your family lives, are not the same as in your work life or when you're with friends out and away from work and home. So identities change from context to context and they change over the life course. But not only that, as I've just said, one of the reasons that I'm attracted to intersectionality is that it helps us to understand that everybody has multiple identities all at the same time. So we have to think about dynamism, change, and we have to think about multiplicity, which makes identities hard to study because we cannot assume that if we learn something about people's identities, that it's the only thing to know. We need to know who they're relating to at a particular time to understand which identities will be important to them at that moment. And you only need to think about those of your friends who are afraid to bring certain groups of people together because it would be uncomfortable for them. And the reason for that is not that they're somehow lying about who they are, but that different aspects of themselves come to the fore in different settings with different people. So identities are also relational. <laughs>